Muslim radicalization in high security prisons. That's what I'm talking about in this video, people. So what I mean by radicalization is in the high security estate, the majority of Muslims that are in there now don't come from a Muslim background, as in the families aren't Muslim and they haven't grew up to be, to be Muslims. The majority of them are black lads most of them are young black lads, I'm talking like in the 20s and 30s, that have went into prison on various different charges in for murder. A lot of the majority of the high security of them are in for murders, gang murders. Um, and the, mo mostly the majority of them are they're from all over the country, but mainly in Birmingham and London, some Manchester um, <clears throat> and the Midlands. But what happens is, these lads that are just in doing the sentences um, that aren't Muslim are actually getting converted to Muslim, to Islam. Um, and the majority of them are just doing it to be in a gang. Because you can see why a lot of them do it, because they've, they've grew up in a gang mentality, gang culture, and they're a part of a gang. But then they get into the high security, they get into the prisons. And they're not part of a gang no more, they're all individuals meeting each other from all over the country. But then what happens is they get into a group, they get into a gang, and they get converted to Islam to be part of the gang. Now the Muslims have got the stronghold in the high security prisons. They've got all the jails, like the fight, the dispersals, they've got the majority of them, they've got all of them on lock because there's that many of them and they're all stick together. So what happens is with the Muslims, when they've got trouble with someone, see they've got trouble with one, per one person on the wing, and there's like 20 or 30 Muslims, all of them will come round to attack. And there's not just like I see it, the whole group will come, the whole gang will come. And that's how there's not a lot of people can do anything with them in their high security state, because there's that many of them. And when I'm seeing radicalization, what, what I mean in terms of that is they're joining this gang to be part of it and they're using violence against other inmates. So it's not like the religion of peace where they're getting together and they're being peaceful. They're getting together and they're inflicting violence on other people in the prison who they've got beef with. But a lot of the beef in high security prisons started, or the beef that I seen when I was in Franklin, it started, or some of it started, over the, the, the Muslim terrorists that were in prison. There was a few in on my ring when I was there, Darren Barrett. I can't remember the name of the other two. One of them, I think, was the doctor from Glasgow that drove into the airport. Um, and they got attacked in Franklin. One of them, Darren Barrett, it was the second day I was there. I've mentioned it previously. Um, I was in the kitchen. My mate was cooking as a steak. My second day there, like I said. 21 year old um, and I seen a pan of hot oil bubbling away and somebody come in the kitchen picked it up and tipped it over Darren Barrett's head when he was standing washing his dishes and I seen the skin and everything just peeling off the back of his head and because there was about 20 Muslims on the wing at the time because it doesn't matter that he's a terrorist the Muslims are all as one, so if something happens to one of them, they all react. And that's how, like I say, they've got a bit of a stronghold. But some of the, should I say, bigger lads with the bigger names, the big gangsters from throughout the country, the likes of Warren Slaney and Andy Shuck, for instance, is they've got major Rick with the Muslims. What I mean by Rick is trouble. They've got major trouble with the Muslims because they wouldn't stand for what was going on in there. And when I say they wouldn't stand for what was going on, I'll give you a couple of instances what people didn't dis what people disagreed with and they didn't like and this is why a lot of this trouble started between some of the bigger naughty gangsters, the white lads and the Muslims. So see there's a lad on the wing who's debted up some of these bigger white lads who's selling the drugs and that on the wing. Um, 
and see how this one lad, he's getting debted up and he hasn't paid his debts. Um, then the Muslims can see what's going on and they like get a hold of him and say, listen, convert to Islam, we'll protect you. So before you know it, and some of these I'm talking about is like white lads. So you've got white lads running around the wing with the, um, the Muslim cap on and the robes. And they're not doing it for the religion. This is where it's getting separated. It's not for Islam, the religion of peace. They're now converting to be part of the gang to get protection. And some of the lads you see getting converted, there's like, there's grasses, rapists. If they get converted to Islam, they're then protected by the Muslim brothers. And this is what the likes of Warren Slaney and Andy Shack didn't stand for and didn't like. So I am, um, when I was in there, I was on F wing and on G wing, there was a couple of little, there was a couple of riots kicked off. It happened on F wing as well. And it happened on G wing, but on G wing, the, um, the Muslims and I'll sort of say the white lads, even some of the black lads that were Christians that weren't Muslim were involved. So they were all fighting against each other. So it was a bit of a race, a bit of a fight against religions, to be honest. So, Andy Shack and Warren Slaney, obviously tough, hard fighting lads, are just straight in there and they're knocking people out left, right and centre. So there's lads fucking knocked out lying along the floor. And that's where a lot of the trouble started. So uh, uh, Warren Slaney already had trouble with the Muslims because he had a disagreement with um, Gary Nelson. And I don't know the situations or the ins and outs of this, why there was trouble between them. This stemmed from another prison, and then when they both came to that prison, there was um, there was trouble between them. So now because they have got trouble, and obviously Warren's chinned a few of the Muslim lads on the wing, they're all out to get Warren. So Warren can't move to the other prisons. Or when when the what they do is they transfer these Katia prisoners amongst the different dispersals because they can't stay in the same one for so long. So when the transfer and Warren down to another nick, see it down to Whitemore or Full Sutton, the screws won't let them on the wing. So they put them in the block because they know there's going to be trouble. And obviously what they've heard in the prison, the Muslims are saying they're going to fucking kill him as soon as he lands on the wing or they're going to do him. So he's then stuck in the block. So because he's got ricks with the Muslims, he's not allowed on the wings and he's then got to sit in the blocks. So I've known lads sit down there two and three year stuck in the block just because they're not allowed on the wing and the cut ears they don't know what to do with them because anywhere they put them there's trouble um, and like I mentioned before Andy Shack, he was the same I think he chinned a couple of the Muslims on the wing um, and then he ended up having Major Rick with them and what used to happen was when lads had trouble in the cut ear high security nicks they used to look forward to getting to the Cap B prisons because the Cap B prisons were more relaxed and the Muslims, they weren't on it like they were in the high security estates. It was more relaxed. It seemed as if once the Muslims went from Cap A's to Cap B's, they sort of left that trouble behind and they moved on because they're progressing with the sentence and they don't want the trouble. They want to get freed. At the end of the day, every man in prison locked up wants to be free. They want to get out. So that's what people are aiming for when they get the cap bees and that's why there wasn't as much trouble there but what they've actually done is the governors and everybody um <clears throat> in the high security mix they thought they were easing the pressure off the high security estate because it was that violent and that out of control a lot of these uh high risk like high profile muslims and a lot of the other muslim lads that were cardiers they give them the cap bees, thinking they were easing the pressure and it was going to make the problem a bit, a bit easier. But what they've actually done is created a bigger problem because the Muslims that have went into the cap bees from these prisons are then meeting up with the white lads that they had trouble with. So then the same situation is arising. Um, same as Goff, I've heard down in Goff, They've got uh, the Muslim lads have got all the wings boxed off. There's only one wing that's full of scouts and monks, the ones that have got trouble with the Muslims. Same goes for the Muslims. The Muslims can't go on that wing because the scouts and the monks have got that wing boxed off. 
but the Muslims have got all the other wings boxed off. So this is the tensions and the, the situations that have arised from all this. And like I see a lot of it stemmed from the terrorists getting attacked. Because you would think even if you're a Muslim or a black lad and you've turned, you convert to Muslim, you would think that like these terrorists that have tried to kill everybody, doesn't matter what race or religion you are, when they try to do like the traffic center, different things, um, you would think that everyone would be against them, but it's not, it's total opposite. Because the Muslims, and these are the ones that are converting the rest of the lads, getting them in that gang mentality, that then everyone's protected. And this is what's actually going on. A lot of you are sitting back at home, because some of you commented on my last video, part one, about the gangs in prison. You didn't actually realize, someone commented thinking that the Muslim gangs in prison were mainly from like Arabic backgrounds, Muslim backgrounds, Muslim families. But it's not, it's not the situation. The majority of them have been converted. And I remember one lad on the wing, black lad from London, he was a devout Christian. He used to walk around with his little chain on with a cross on. And because his friends converted and he didn't convert, he was like a bit of an outcast. He was like solo on the wing by himself. And I think eventually he got attacked and I think he did actually end up converting. And it's all to do with saving his own life. And that's how it, that's what it comes down to. Something's with them. They're doing it just for protection. It's nothing to do with their religion. It's all to do with protection. Um, so that is what's actually going on with the Muslim radicalization and the Muslim gangs in prison. It's actually crazy when you think of it, like when you're actually living it and you're seeing what's going on firsthand. Like people didn't understand. I've seen a, um, there was one lad, white lad that was running around the wing. He wasn't all there. You could see he had long hair. And even some of the Muslim lads would just walk around in normal everyday wear, like tracksuit gear and all that. And then you've got him with a big white robe on. He looked like Jesus, to be honest. Big white robe on, long hair. And he's a little cap, the Muslim cap. And he's running around every day with his Quran and his hand. He was a white lad. He was there, uh, he was on drugs, got converted. I think he actually came off the drugs when he converted. And he did actually turn into a devout Muslim. So uh, they're not they're not all doing it for that, but the majority are doing it for protection. And um, like I say, the Muslims have got the stronghold in the prisons in them high security nicks. <clears throat> But then they come up against the likes of Warren and Slay and Andy Shatt and that. And they, uh, that's when it comes on top. But they're outnumbered because um, obviously the white lads that don't stick together. Simply for the fact that they don't want to get sent down to another nick where it's full of the Muslims. Because I'll tell you a story about a white lad. I'm seeing a white lad. I'm just saying that because that's what it was. A white lad um, who had a bit of trouble with the Muslims in Franklin and the screws knew it. He had a fuck, and I think he chinned a couple of the Muslim lads. Um, and there wasn't many of them on the wing at the time. So he was walking around the wing freely. Nothing was happening to him. Um, and he had a disagreement with the screws. And he had a fight with the screws. And he fucking battered a couple of the screws. And the screws thought, right, we know what you're fucking, what treatment you're going to get. And they just sent, right, send him down to Lawton. So he was on the next bus down to Long Lawton. Bearing in mind they'd done it, no one for a fact that he was going to get done when he got there from the Muslims. So he went on the wing in Long Lawton and he wasn't on the wing two minutes. He went into his pad, fucking the Muslim lads followed him in, pool balls in the sock, bang, smashed him over the head from behind, knocked him out cold and when he's on the floor, they were just stabbing him to fucking bits. He woke up in hospital, nearly fucking died, and didn't know what had happened because he'd been, because he got knocked out and stabbed up. But that was an example of the screws like being corrupt and getting paid back and knowing that he's hit one of ours so we're going to send him down there knowing fine well the next thing we hear is that he's going to have been done in off the Muslims so uh, I've still got loads more to talk about to be honest but I'll leave it there for now because it's went on for nearly 15 minutes so I will do another part there very soon but I'll leave that one there for now people but um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend stay safe everyone take care